What's up, y'all? My name is Devonte, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. Man, what y'all know about this music right here, man? What y'all know about this music right here? This music right here. Guarantee you half y'all motherfuckers. This this is grown folk music. You know, I guarantee you half y'all motherfuckers are probably made to this music. So I want y'all to sit back and enjoy some of the good old R&B flashbacks and, and, you know, some of them throwback jams, all right? Damn, this sounds like 25 years old now, isn't it? I remember this song like in 98 or 99 when I was like a jig. Damn. <sighs> Fuck, I'm getting old. Yo, but check it out though. Actually, you know what? I was thinking about using some alternative rock music going for. You know what? Nah. Cause I still got like two more songs I want to use. I got the Brad's Funkified. So, so, so Funkified. And I got um Escape. I haven't used them yet either. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to this Escape view. Just kick it. Just kick it. Jazz kick it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep going with the RB songs. I still got a couple more I want to plug real quick. But uh, with that being shared, folks, let's see what's on the tap for tonight. Because I'm in a good mood right now. I was gonna let you know I'm in a pleasant motherfucking mood, all right? I just went to my homeboy house. We were just kicking it ourselves over there. My neighbor pulled up. He had some of that good old fashioned purple. Ew. Can I sit on YouTube? Probably can't. All right. Uh, and now I'm in a bad mood again. What in the actual mother of God is this goddamn card? Oh, God. Only AEW. Only AEW can instantaneously make me in a bad mood. Maybe I am turning this corner. Maybe you motherfuckers are right. Oh, God damn. Maybe I am turning the corner. I should not be getting this mad over professional wrestling. I shouldn't. I really shouldn't. But I can't help it. We had Deanna Perrazzo in a match tonight as if I give a fuck or you give a fuck or me give a fuck or he gives a fuck or she gives a fuck or they give a fuck. No such as they. No such thing as they. Uh, Tony Storm and her big booty ass about, a, about the only thing I actually care about. Samoa Joe, Swerve Strickland, and Brian Cage? What the fuck did Brian Cage come versus Heyman Page? Rob Van Dam and Hook? What in the universe most simulation hell is this match right here? What in the actual fuck? Tony Khan, are you snorting while booking again? Boy, we've been through this before. Stop snorting while booking, nigga! John Moxley, Claudio Cashelloni versus LT. Oh, okay. Throw my hands up. All right, hopefully we get a fun segment tonight. Hopefully we get some fun promos tonight to make up for this god-awful fucking car. This is some bullshit if I ever seen it myself. I'm hoping maybe we can get some... You know what? I can't even tell you what I'm looking forward to, honestly. Because my thing is, if the two contenders for the championship belt is going to be in the six-man tag match, and Joe's going to be in that match also... FTR, or not FTR, FTR, fuck FTR. A AEW has a hard problem multitasking when it comes to booking people multiple times on the show sometimes. So, I don't think we're going to get, maybe Edge and Christian? I don't fucking know. You know what? <sighs> let's just get into the show and let's just see what's going to happen because I can see already that I'm going to get triggered. <sighs> then again, at least I got three more hours. It's five o'clock in the afternoon right now. I still got three more hours, so I'm just going to go. Live life to the fullest before I end up skibbity myself in Minecraft. Huh. But with that being said, you guys will know that. And for all you know, right now, we're about to review AEW Dynamite. So with that being said and done, let's move forward. Leroy Jenkins. All right. So I got time to talk real quick before they have this Orange Cassidy match, which honestly, I don't give a shit about. I really, really, really don't care about. I would have much preferred to see an angle another promo something on the lines of that and i know they were trying to run an angle with them you know with moxley and cesaro and ftr and i'm not gonna sit here and i'm not gonna say it was a bad match it was a good match i liked it i mean just it, there is a couple of things about the match in itself and not only that but just the monotonous or the monotony in regards to the placement of the match as far as the opener look real quick not even to trash the match i'm not gonna trash it it was a good match Yes, I wish, and they do this all the time. It's like the complete opposite from WWE. Like with WWE, they always have to do promos that really don't 
lead too much into anything. I mean, the only time a promo in WWE has any kind of substance really is when you are, um, I don't know, when you're touching on something that legitimately happened in real life, whether that's a CM Punk injury or Seth Rollins injury. And even then, they never really capitalized on any of the things that happened in the beginning of their promos. It could be really, really boring. And the same thing can be said for this also. It's like they always started off with matches. I would really like it if they can just have something, you know, kick off the night and then we can leave that into the main event and then we can get some structure in the middle to give a reason to want to watch the main event like you get what i'm saying like i'm not asking for you to have to go full on vince russo but just to have something of substance in the beginning of the show to lead and have and again i touch i've been saying this for how many years now to have somewhat of a linear story a main idea a theme for the show to go throughout the night to have a crux you know what i mean so you can have something to look forward to going throughout the show and you know inevitably be prepared for the main event i would have liked to see something with samoa joe preferably i would have liked to see something maybe i don't know maybe something can happen before the show came on came before it came on the air right maybe it could have been something with like i don't know swerve strickland who was attacked backstage by Heyman adam page or something along the lines of that and then you lead into the theme and then you come on to the show in the beginning and then you have samoa joe cutting the promo something along the lines of that they just have consistent and they do this every week again it's like the it's like the anti wwe but in a bad way it's like to kick it off every damn week with a match that shit gets boring really really fast especially for a show where all it's known for is just wrestling right and I will definitely say that the match in itself, like I said before him, it wasn't a bad match. Now, a nitpick real quick. And honestly, I don't think it's a nitpick. It's actually a fucking problem. They did a spike power driver on the outside of the floor. I will never understand these wrestlers. Like, you do not have to go so above and beyond to get your point across. I actually think you're... In my opinion, at the very least, people are like, oh, Devontae, who, who, what gives you the right to want to judge the wrestlers? You're not the one on the ring taking the bumps. Oh, shut the fuck up, okay? And guess what? You're not a chef, but I don't I see you fucking, you know, having problems with saying that Doritos taste fucking terribly. I've been saying that for years now. Same metaphor, same analogy, same thing, okay? If you have the right to bitch and moan about the food that you eat, yet you're not a chef, you ain't got the right to tell me that I can't be constructive about the, about the wrestling that I've been watching for the better part of 30 years, damn near. And what I've seen in that match with that little spike power driver on the outside of the floor, that was fucking dumb. It was stupid. That's the kind of spot that you would do to run an angle to get someone off a of television for about six months with a neck injury. And they just randomly do it. And they do this shit all the time with AEW. They go above and beyond, and they do the most reckless, stupid shit. Not even reckless. I'm t I take that back. Because it's not as if the people who are in the match aren't professionals. But I mean reckless in the sense of, like, the imagery, what you're trying to get across. Because what you're essentially telling me is that... It Maybe no one thinks like this. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the one that's just stuck in my own little bubble. Maybe it could just me being stuck in my own little mentality. But is it just me... I can't be the only one who will look at guys like, say, a Hulk Hogan, a Andre the Giant, a Macho Man Randy Savage, a Rick Rude, an Ultimate Warrior, you know, a Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Austin Rock, Taker, Foley, Kane, Big Show, Jericho, all those guys throughout the years. Is it just me? Am I the only one to think to myself that I watched these guys wrestle and they didn't do half the stuff these guys did and yet they went down to the most, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to say simplest. I, I think that's not the way to say it. Maybe in comparison to today. But I felt like it took them less damage, you know, to go down for a pinfall. And then I see guys like, for an example, Orange Cassidy in the ring who could take like, I don't know, 10 times the damage a guy like A Rock would take back in the year 2000. And for some reason, they can kick out of a million and one finishers and shit like that. But The Rock can only like lose to a fucking DDT or something like that. Like, get the fuck out of here. I don't know if no one thinks about that. Again, maybe it's just me. But that always fucks with me a little bit from a mentality standpoint, knowing good and damn well like the majority of these wrestlers in the past have nothing on the wrestlers back in the days right but i'm supposed to sit here and buy the fact that you can do all these damn finishers and all these damn moves to your opponent and they don't go down for like the next 30 minutes after taking the 18 fucking canadian destroyer on the fucking floor but a guy like chris jericho legitimately early 2002 tag team match jericho kurt angle versus rock and awesome if i'm not mistaken jericho went down to a fucking ddt as the undisputed champion you get what i'm saying and like I said, the match in itself was fine. It was good. They went into a, and that's something else too. Like they're now starting to get a little bit of over usage on the fucking drawing stipulation. And I understand this is a way for you to set up going into the next pay-per-view. I get it. They, they started to brawl. They had a little bit of an angle. That was actually pretty good. I like that. They were brawling outside of the ring. You had security guards and referees and the losers and nerds backstage having to break up the actual stars. I get that. 
And that's what's going to lead into the pay-per-view. They even had a little bit of a scuffle backstage. And, okay, I'm cool with that. I'm fine with that. It was an angle to set up the show. But what I'm saying is, and this is just one's own opinion, there are better ways to go about it that could be just as exciting without having to be stagnant and having to rely on the same things over and over and over and over again. It's like you're using a hammer to do all the tools. Like you're, like, like, like you're using a hammer to... And, and, and I get it. Hammers do nail and nails. That's what they're supposed to do. But you have a drill for a screw and you keep using the hammer for every fucking thing. Like eventually you can use a different tool in order to get the job done. And it will be just as effective, if not even more effective. Because again, a hammer going inside a nail ain't always going to do the trick. You're going to need a drill bit. You're going to need an actual screw. And that's what's going to have to do the job eventually. That's that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Of course, people are going to probably be offended by that also. Oh, Devontae, here you go again, overly criticizing AEW. That was a fucking great opener. Okay, great. I'm happy that you feel the way. Sorry that I want more within my professional wrestling. Sorry that I have experienced more in my professional wrestling. And this is what you are subjected to as far as the culture of professional wrestling nowadays. And this is all you can see because you're narrow-minded as fuck. I suggest going through the catalog of history within WWE or WCW or, hell, at this point, I'll even throw in TNA for that matter. And, you know, get a little bit up on your history and understand that there are things that they can do to make the product so much better that you don't even realize that can actually occur in today's professional wrestling. That's all I'm saying. Continue on with the show, though. All right, so I'll make this somewhat quick because Ric Flair is about to come out to have a little bit of a segment. And out of respect for Ricky McRick Rick, I'm going to, you know, try to speed this up because maybe it might be a fun segment. Maybe it might have something to do with the Young Bucks and Sting and Darby Allen, which I've been enjoying for the past couple of weeks now. So I'll give them respect and I'll, you know, I'll give my I'll give them my undivided attention because they earned my undivided attention. You know, for people, oh, Devontae, you hate AEW. No, I don't. I just call it like I see it. I think I've been pretty fair as of late when it comes to AEW and if you have a problem with my criticisms rather than being a little bitch and trying to generalize it and use it as an insult you can always just you know confront my criticisms but of course you won't do that of course no none of you AEW fanboys will ever actually fucking do that because you're tribalist in the end of the day and your opinions don't fucking matter so fuck you and uh go suck your mom's dick but uh let's talk about this real quick so you have this match if you even want to call it that with orange cassidy versus uh what's his name mike canellis mike bennett whatever the fuck his name is i really don't give a shit about the cunt i mean this is the same loser that took his daughter to fucking drag queen story hour or fucking drag queen oh it's fine to take your little kids to go watch grown-ass men dress up as women and do whatever they fucking want to do even though the majority of them are fucking pedophiles but that's fine that so, no, actually, that's not okay. You're a fucking loser, Mike Bennett. And, and you know what? Go fuck yourself in. Hopefully, something really, really bad happens to you one of these days. Because fuck you, dude. But regardless, though, this match sucked. I didn't give two shits about it. What I really do want to talk about is what happened after the match. So, you have the rest of his twink-ass friends come out to beat the shadow Orange Cassidy, right? And for some ungodly reason, which I don't think I can explain. I don't think you guys can explain. I don't think anyone can explain Jake Hager makes his return. Jack Swagger. Jack Swagger. Swagger. I mean, who asked for this? Did you ask for this? Did I ask for this? Who the fuck cares about Mr. Jack Swagger? Everybody out of the room. Rey Mysterio, you're mine. No, be no, please, Mr. White Man, please, no, I, I, you guys remember that something back in 2010? That shit still kills me to this very fucking day. But yeah, he saves Mr. Orange Cassidy, stupid ass. And I'm just looking at this. I'm just thinking to myself, God damn, bro, where's where's Solomon's to where you need him, right? Holy shit, man, he fits right in with that little group right there. Am I right? But yeah, that was just something that just caught me off guard. Jack Swagger, the fucking wrestler that absolutely nobody asked for, made his return to absolutely. No fucks given. And speaking of no fucks given, that's as many fucks as I'm going to get to this segment. So, like I said, quick little turnaround. Let's get to what Flair is going to talk about. All right, sweet. So, we have a women's match. So, I can actually talk for a little bit. Okay, so there's actually a couple of segments that we're going to go over. And it's all going to tie into one little 
one little and honestly you know they're not gonna have a main idea they're not gonna have a theme throughout the show so i guess i'll just make one up on my own right i guess i'll just be the one to kind of give you guys your own main idea for aew dynamite tonight because that's what it kind of feels like to me and that's probably gonna be the title of this entire video it feels so disorganized even if you want to say that the show is good so far which it's not terrible but it just has this feeling of so much disorganization where priorities aren't quite in check, where one should be one, but for, I don't know why, for some reason, one is four and two is five and three is six. It just, it just doesn't, I don't know. It just, it, it, things just feel kind of out of sync, out of whack, if you will. Right. So l let's talk about this. I'll, I'll give you like two examples, two perfectly fine examples. You have Ric Flair. And apparently, because we haven't seen him for the past couple of weeks now, he feels like he's kind of been slighted a little bit by Sting. Like, hey, I would have really appreciated to been part of this whole little retirement angle that you're currently doing. He didn't say it like that, but obviously that's what he's alluding to. And, you know, he went to the Young Bucks locker room and he's like, you know what? Well, I'm going to try to find a way to get myself inserted to all of this. And the Young Bucks you know, they invited Ric Flair in. He's Ric Flair. If he wants to go in your locker room, you're going to open that door and you're going to fucking not only open that door, but you're probably going to get on your knees and bow it out to him while he walks in your locker room because he's going to grace you with his presence because he's Ric fucking Flair. And, you know, I kind of want to skip around a little tiny bit because I want to save that Christian Cage segment for last for what I want to talk about. Let's jump to this whole little thing as far as the build up for the main event tonight because finally they touched on their main event. Finally, right? Finally, they touched on the main event for tonight. This exhibition, random simulated fucking universe mode X type of match that the AI butt named Tony Khan, the snow, the, the cokehead man himself, the snowman, whatever the fuck you want to call him. They finally touched on it. And I like the character development with Hangman Adam Page. He's coming off way more snarky, way more arrogant, way more, I don't know if you want to say, almost obsessed a little bit with uh, Swerve Strickland, which I like that. That's fine. And, you know, he's kind of berating RVD. He's kind of berating uh, Hook a little tiny bit, saying, like, you know, if you guys would have, you know, did your jobs, I probably would have been in this predicament right now as we speak. But that's fine. That it's okay. You know, we're going to go out there. We're going to kick some ass. We're going to focus. We're going to pay attention. And we're going to get the job done. No, I just want to remind you guys, um, throughout the night, that's probably the least given time to any segment that I've seen so far tonight. Keep that in mind, because I'm going somewhere with this. We had this match, or match, sorry, promo, with uh, da Daniel Garcia. He, he comes out, you know, he does a little stupid, goofy-ass dance, and he starts to have this promo. It's the stereotypical, guys, you like me? You really, really like me? Type of promo you get every from every guy. Damn Can I say that also? Like, I'm to the point now where I'm trying to say, that's probably like the second most laziest fucking type of promo. Is, is it just me? It can't just be me, right? That's the second laziest type of fucking promo. Where, like, either you, the first being the shoot promo, right? Because everybody knows how to shoot. Everybody can shoot from here, brother. I'm shooting right now, for an example. Anybody can fucking shoot. You're literally just speaking your mind. It's really not that hard to speak your mind. But can I just say also the second laziest promo in professional wrestling, especially as a babyface? I put this on par with the hills going out there getting heat by you know talking about how bad the sports team is it's the baby face going out there going guys i won't let you down i'm just gonna tell you right now i worked so damn hard i worked so damn hard 10 years 20 years 18 years a billion years i, I worked so damn hard to get to this spot and i just want you guys to understand yeah yeah, I, I deserve it. You deserve it. Yeah, I know. I know. For the, thank you, guys. Because it worked so damn hard. Yeah. Yeah. Clap it up. Yeah, you guys. You No, no, you're the best ones. You guys all deserve it. Because it worked so damn hard. Like, God damn, bro. That is the laziest fucking promo. I promise you. It's not just me. I know it's not just me. Probably just me. But Christian, because he's Christian Cage, saved this entire fucking segment. He comes out to the ring. He interrupts Daniel Garcia's boring-ass promo. And, <laughs> of course, because Christian's fucking great, he goes in on him. He's like, I heard that you live at this address somewhere in New York. And do you know this person? He says his mom's name. And he's like, I think she was married to this person. And then he says his dad's name. And he's like, and I can't. I, I'm not the one that's mistaken here. I think he's dead. Your father's dead. 
and he's a piece of crap alcoholic. And Gail Garcia, he's actually getting mad. You know, he's actually showing emotion. You know, he's actually showing that tangible feeling that we can actually relate to with a character without going, I work so damn hard. Because we all work hard in every fucking night. Everybody works hard, Gail Garcia. Wrestlers, baby fishers, we all work hard. We all have to get up nine to five having to fucking do what we have to do in order to pay our bills and take care of our kids and live our lives. Okay. You're no different. It's a job description. In fact, to me, sometimes when I hear the baby faces talk like this, unless they're legitimately fucking struggling to me, it kind of seems like you're like, I don't know, being dismissive of everybody else, but I digress. Regardless, Christian starts talking shit. Daniel Garcia is like, well, you know what? How about you come to this ring, Christian, and you say all that stuff inside the ring, and I could put you in the ground right next to my dad, which kind of tells me he probably didn't have a good relationship with his dad, but that's so gay! <sighs> Regardless, though, Christian sends uh, Nick Wayne to go out there. He gets his ass kicked. Uh, he sends fucking Dino Lad out there. He's about to go in the ring. And then Cool Hand Luke, or whatever the fuck his name is, comes out with a chair. His fucking tag team partner hits Luchasaurus in the back or Kill Switch Engage or fucking, I don't know, Stained or fucking Bring Me to the Horizon or, I don't know, maybe Incubus, whatever the fuck his name is. And then he hits with the chair. Then he, like, runs up the goddamn uh, rampway. And he gets in the ring, and the way he was positioned, I thought he was going to hit Dan Garcia in the back for a second. I just want to bring up the fact also, uh, I don't know if this means anything, but uh, isn't that guy like Canadian? Like, I could be wrong, but I think he's Canadian, right? Not saying that's going to play a factor into the match, but, you know, just something to throw out there. I don't know. Just I, I'm just throwing out ideas. But, uh, yeah, uh, they send in the ring, and Christian's out there, and he's seething. He's grieving because he's Christian and he's one of the best fucking people in the goddamn whole goddamn fucking super duper goddamn AEW because Christian fucking rules. And, you know, he actually gets this because he's a fucking veteran. But this all ties in together. As I said earlier on, between Ric Flair walking up to the Young Bucks like this and it's 912 and they're already having the next match with Deanna Perrazzo versus uh, who the fuck is that? Oh, is that Madison Rain? Oh, I haven't seen her in, like, what, 15 years? Whatever. But, yeah, uh, I'm assuming now they're probably going to do an angle, most likely, with the Young Bucks and probably try to do something with Darby Allin and Sting after this match, which is going to be fucking awesome because, again, I'm digging this shit so far. But notice, between the, between the um, what's, what's Buddy's name again? Orange Cassidy. They gave him some segment time. They gave him an angle versus what the fuck is happening right now with the tag team title match versus what happened with Christian right now and this whole little angle he has going on right now and then Edge and all this other kind of stuff. And then you had the women right now with two back-to-back -back matches. Is it is it just me or does it just feel like the World Heavyweight Championship is once again taking a back seat to everybody? You have right now on the upswing one of the most promising talents and Swerve Strickland. Right now, if you play your cards right, you have a pretty strong character in Hangman Adam Page. And you can never go wrong with a Samoa Joe, one of the best mic workers in the entire fucking business, one of his most underrated qualities, if you ask me, who actually looks formidable, who's actually authentic. He could legitimately be a great world champion if you fucking booked them right. That's my biggest problem. That's why I keep saying this shit feels super duper disorganized. Why does everybody feel like they're more of a priority than the world champion right now? And this has always been a fucking problem with AEW. Whether you're talking about Kenny Omega, whether you're talking about uh, Adam Page, whether whether you're talking about MJF, whether you're talking about now Samoa Joe. It, it just always feels like they're always taking a back seat to like all the other champions. And it's like it's like he has this mark mentality as if he actually believes the title bestowed upon you being world champion just negates everything else that title that name world champion that right there just means okay you're good you're solid no bro it's not the champion that makes the child it's not the championship belt that makes the champion it's the champion that makes the championship belt and it's like he has yet not since probably arguably ironically enough given his position right now since jericho maybe do I remember the World Heavyweight Champion actually being prioritized? And he was the first ever champion. And that was almost five years ago. Like the World, like the, the, the AEW World Championship feels like it's the least prioritized World Championship in probably professional wrestling history. And I, I, I like what he's doing so far with the angles. I like what he's doing going into AEW Revolution. The car looks pretty decent. 
on call on paper, if you look at the names, if you look at the build, it's not the best build for the entire show, but it's decent enough. And I'm looking at this and I'm just saying to myself, with all the matches, and honestly, I haven't been following anything on Collision, so don't try to hold me to anything accountable in regards to Danielson or Keekson. I heard they're having a match with the Triple Crown Continental, or whatever fucking Bobby's your uncle inside your asshole match. But like, it feels like every match is more prioritized than the World Championship, and that's a fucking huge problem. But I'll give them the opportunity. They have the chance tonight in the main event to make up for that. I, I don't know how they're going to do it with this random ass, again, like I said, AI Tony Khan book special, but change my mind because right now, ain't it, it, it doesn't feel like the World Heavyweight Championship is special. It feels like you're special for booking the World Championship in this way. But again, we'll see when we'll get there. Let's get there first, though. Oh, man, I hate that. I hate that. I really 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 and look this could be the religious side of me this could be the superstitious side of me because i don't talk like this on my channel you guys don't know anything about my personal life but i'm incredibly incredibly superstitious you know i'm not the kind of guy to see a black cat walk across the world and feel like i have to go in that direction i don't split poles i don't walk underneath ladders i don't open up my umbrella inside my house none of that shit i i'm very very superstitious and i hate i hate it when people talk like that especially when they're older so you have this promo right with sting and darby allen darby is talking about sting and like he brings a picture of his kids and he's showing his kids and it's like you understand that this is this man flesh and this is his this is his sons this is flesh and blood and you guys put your hands on them which by the way is kind of weird because his kids i mean they look like they're older than me but again i digress whatever he's talking right and then stain comes into the frame and you can see in his eyes you know obviously the makeup it's there, but you can see his eyes getting a little bit red, like he, like he was crying or something, or he's about, he's about to cry. And he mentions that all this stuff about his kids and family, he just lost his dad about a week ago. His father passed on. And he's like, you know, and I hate when wrestlers talk like this. It reminds me of the Ultimate Warrior, you know. And he's like, I have to question my own morality, my own mortality, excuse me, sometimes. And, you know, I have to question how long do I have left? And it's like, dude, that's such a bad fucking omen. That just gives me the fucking heebie-jeebies when wrestlers talk like that, bro. It just gives me such a bad fucking omen. Like, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate when people talk like that. Because it's like, you, you, man, you guys know when you talk things into existence, you know, when you start talking and you manifest it and it's like, ah, I don't want to think about it. But like, fuck, bro, he didn't he didn't have to go saying all of that, man, because it I don't know, man. I, good thoughts. Good thoughts. Good thoughts. My point being is, though, it was a great I like the promo. It was very um, I, I don't want to say uh, I don't think sinister is the right word, but, um, you know, it, 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 it was it was a dark promo. It was a very um, uh, a very dark ambient feeling type of promo and you could tell that the guys are looking at this like we're taking this personal and the tag team match is going to happen at aew it's it's a, a revolution it's going to be a tornado tag match so at least you know it's going to be fast paced at least you know the things that are going to occur in that match is going to be something crazy or oh, hang on tony shivani's talking i could probably double this up hang on for a second all right fuck rampage i don't care let's talk about this motherfucking promo right here Warlow went out there and he cut one of the best fucking promos I've heard in a long motherfucking time. This motherfucker was cooking. Warlow was on fucking fire. I mean, this motherfucker was cooking. The, and the aggression in his voice, the compassion in his voice for himself. Feel like he was robbed these past couple of years because he has. He has. Go back to 2021. Unfortunately, my my unfortunately my channel isn't around right now, right? My old millennial smart channel. But I was I was praising the shit out of Warlow. Go back to 2020. I was on the fucking Warlow train long before anybody else was, and I get I don't want to be one of those people to feel like I'm a fucking elitist. But I'm saying though, I'm a huge Warlow fan. 
I was, let me say that, I was a huge Warlow fan. And as time went on, they just consistently kept burying the guy. Burying the guy. You can't think, you cannot, tell me another homegrown AEW talent who looks the part of a Warlow. Tell me another homegrown AEW talent who looks like if you were to flip the channels, you would actually land on him and say to yourself, holy shit, that guy right there, I want to see him. A four-year-old little boy passing through the channels will land on Warlow and say to themselves, holy shit, that's a fucking real-life superhero. That's a person I want to grow up to fucking be or look like at the very least that's a person who could be a fucking a role model even if you will like this guy looks like a combination he's like he's everything that you will want in a superstar the athleticism the look the caliber and apparently looking at what he did tonight the fucking charisma and mic skills this motherfucker was fucking on fire bruh talking about how he was better than CM Punk. He didn't name them outright, but he's better than CM Punk. He's better than MJF. How you've been feeding him. He's, I love, I love this part. This is towards the end of his promo when he said this. I fucking love this line, especially how he delivered it. I love how he looks at the key. Like, he's like, look at me. Fucking look at me. Do you know how, like, you would think I would have been a world champion years ago, and I've never even been given the opportunity to go after the world championship. Look at me. And he takes the cameraman, and he points it towards the Tiny Tron. He's like, look at that. Look at me. I'm a, Look at me. How am I not a world champion? And I've been saying that, too, for the longest. Look at Warlow. How is he not a fucking world champion? That guy right there should be the standard bearer. He should be the leader of your company. He should be the Roman Reigns of AEW at this fucking point, when you think about it, logically speaking, right? But, of course, we got a bunch of fucking midgets, some flippity, flippity, dippity, dippity wrestlers going around pretending as if they should be the star caliber of the fucking, of the entire goddamn company. No, it's Warlow. It's people like Warlow who can actually do media runs for your company to make your company look like a incredible fucking company the second coming to goldberg and you throw him away like a fucking piece of trash and he says and i love this line he says you, I, i'm starving right now i'm starving and i'm tired of being fed scraps I, I, I'm, I'm hungry and this is no longer wrestling this is war i fucking Love that line. That shit had me popping. I popped so hard for that line. That needs to be his catchphrase. This is war. That is fucking kick ass. And I'm looking at all this and I'm just saying to myself, like, man, put the world championship on this man right now. Man, fuck this. Put the world title on him right now. I don't give a fuck, bro. Put the world title on Warlord right now. No more of the squash match bullshit. Put the world title on him right now. Now, my only thing is with Warlow, it's like you can't have him come on like come on bro come on you can't have warlow cut a promo like that look like that and just like fucking bury him like have him go out there and like what show up once a week no bro if he's gonna cut a promo like that like you you gotta do something with him for the love of god you gotta do something with him. i don't give a fuck about will osprey i don't give a fuck about take a shitter I don't give a fuck at this point about MJF. They no, but you can't have Warlow looking like this and just make him look like a joke afterwards. I promise you, if they don't do something with fucking Warlow to uh, going going forward, man, I'm sorry, bro. He needs to go to WWE. I guarantee you, they'll do something with him at the very least. He ain't too much older than he ain't too much younger than Batista when he won his first World Heavyweight Championship. Batista won his first World Championship when he was a like, 38 years old. How old is uh, World like, what, 36, maybe around that? 35, 36 years old? Something along the lines of that? He, he can win a world championship at that age, too. Keep fucking around. I see the Don Callis family. I don't give a fuck about them. Fuck those losers. So let's get ready for the main event. But man, bro, don't, don't, man, don't do this to Warlo, bro. Don't let him come out here. Because you got me hyped up. You got me on the Warlo train game after that promo, man. Don't, don't let him look this dominant. And then do nothing with him. How did you not have someone come out and at least challenge him for a match at Revolution at the very least? Something, bro. Maybe that's what the Don Callis one was talking about? Okay, so no. I was listening to the promo just to see if they were going to maybe have Will Hobbs take on Warlow or something like that. No. <sighs> it is what it is, though, man. Just don't let Warlow look as good as he looked tonight and just fucking let that squander away like you've been doing for years, like he touched on in his promo. With that being said, though, let's get to the main event. Again, hopefully they do something with this match right here. So disorganized that I swear to God. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you guys. 
Yeah, this is the theme for tonight. It's just disorganization. It doesn't have anything to do with the match quality. It doesn't have anything to do with the character work or the development. It has everything to do with the disorganization. It Was it just me? And I'm not here to focus on the match quality. Okay, fine. It was a good match. Every, it's 2024. There's no such thing as a bad match, right? Damn near every match today is fucking good. Even the worst match today is probably the best match 15, 20 years ago, okay? Please, give it the rest of that nonsense. C could anyone follow this match? Was that the only one? I, I couldn't follow anything in this mission. I'm not talking about spots. I'm talking about the continuity as far as, like, what the fuck was going on with the characters. Like, wh what the fuck is going on? Like, I, I thought Hangman was a hill, right? And, and I could have sworn Sword Strickland was the baby face. And they're trying to play this game. That's what it kind of comes out to me. They're, 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 they're trying to play this game where everybody doesn't have a legitimate, like, I, I don't know, stance. Like, but, but you can't, you can't do that okay you can't make everybody a fucking tweener not everybody can be an anti-hero because it just causes massive fucking confusion now i get it in the end of the day the aew fanboys the aew audience the aew faithful they're gonna cheer for swerve strickland when it's all said and done kudos to you guys i understand you're so fucking cool i get it honestly it's fine good but for the rest of us, we would like a little bit of, you know, something that's definite, like something that's like solidified, something that we know at the very least. It's like, OK, so if Heyman Adam Page is the fucking hill, then let him be the hill. If Swerve Strickland is the babyface, help make him an anti-hero babyface if you want to. But, but we need to know that he's the babyface. I have no clue as to what the fuck was the reason of all these stories that's been being told these past couple of weeks to put Swerve Strickland on the hill side of everything. It doesn't make sense to me whatsoever. Wouldn't have made more sense, and people can sit back and they can say what they want as far as the story is considered. It probably would have made more sense, especially when, I don't know, call me crazy, wasn't Heyman, you know, talking to Samoa Joe throughout the past couple of weeks and all these promos, and he was like, oh, you know, we're the two guys who should be having this match. We're the ones who actually care for the world championship, right? And then with everything that's been happening with him and Swerve, it would have made more sense. I don't know. Theoretically, it would have made more sense for Swerve to be on the opposite side and Hangman to be on the other side, right? I, or maybe I'm the one that's tripping. Because it got to a point. And look, I don't care about all the other stuff in the match. I don't care. What, what I care about is the story. And, and, and it got to a point in the match where it was Samoa Joe, it was Swerve, and it was Hangman. And all three of them were in the middle of the ring. And like... I, I, I don't get that. Hangman, he's getting jumped by Joe and Swerve. And I get it. They're tag team partners. But I'm not understanding the consistency here. Like, why are you jumping the hill? Right? Is, is he not a hill? Like, I thought we confirmed this like a week ago. I, I thought he was the hill. Or maybe I'm the one that's tripping. Or two weeks ago. I don't, I don't, I don't know. And then, like, you, you have Swerve in the beginning of the match. It kind of seemed like he was retreating from Hangman in the very, very beginning when they were brawling, when they first got into the ring. And it's like... What, what, what's what's what, what the fuck is going on here and then they powerbomb swerve through the announcement table but then he got back up before the match was even over and he's like watching samoa joe choke out raw van down to get the win and i'm just i just i don't i don't get it and then in the outside of the ring you got fucking uh hey man adam page it looks like he's holding his ankle but i'm pretty sure he's just selling i hope he's just selling for his sake and then they go off the air with Heyman looking like a bitch, calling the referees over to, again, I hope it's kayfabe, checking on his his knee or his ankle or whatever is going on with his leg. And then you have Swerve Strickland holding his head after taking a powerbomb through the announcement table like a minute ago, staring down Samoa Joe as he's holding up the world championship. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Honestly, as far as like the alignment, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Like, I get it. We all cheer our favorites, but who am I legitimately supposed to cheer and who am I legitimately supposed to boo? What are you trying to tell me, AEW? Who's the bad guy and who's the good guy? I know Joe is the bad guy. He's the middleman in all this. But with Swerve and Hangman, you know, I would presume your top feud at the moment. Oh, who's the bad guy and who's the good guy? Nothing is making any sense right now. And that's what I mean about the disorganization. Like, I'm happy that you recognize that Joe is your world champion and you let him get the submission win. Finally, you focus on the world champion for tonight. I know, I know, fucking crazy idea, right? That the world champion actually gets some type of focus. But, man, bruh, I just, I, I, I can't, I don't know what I'm supposed to be following right now. Like, imagine watching Batman and, you know, you're having a hard time trying to figure out whether Joker was the good guy or the bad guy. 
kind of kills the whole character of Batman, no? Can you imagine watching Dragon Ball Z and, you know, you're trying to figure out whether or not you're supposed to root for Goku or if you're supposed to root for fucking Cell? Like, it just makes no sense to me whatsoever. It kind of kills the whole, you know, the whole push for Gohan in the end when he actually killed Cell, right? Fuck, make it just, I just, I just need some consistency. Like I said, some continuity. It was... I, I don't even know what I want to say about tonight's show as far as it being good or bad because those little things really irk the shit out of me and it bothered me. I guess if you want to say whether or not it was a good show because of the wrestling, then kudos to you. Great. It was a nice show. Again, that's every fucking show. That's every fucking promotion in North America and Japan and AAA and Mexico, everywhere. Everywhere you go, it's going to be good wrestling. But as far as trying to put across a message, maybe I'm the one that missed everything because I'm not getting the message tonight. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I don't know what to say. I, I, if you had to give it a grade, I guess maybe a C minus. And I'm being gracious with that. Because, again, none of the matches I really gave a shit about at all. And I barely paid attention to most of them. Just background noise for the most part. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. As always, my name is Devontae. And I'll be catching you guys later. Deuces. P. Eyes.